All Saints is one of those glorious moments of grief and hope. It's an acknowledgement of the gaps left behind by those we have loved and lost in the past year and longer. But it is also a celebration of the promise of eternity and the sense that even those we no longer see in the flesh are still part of the foundation of our faith. We give God thanks for the witness of their lives. We ask for a glimpse of the promise. What would it be like to be at home with God or to have God move into our neighborhood? We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who, having finished their course, rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. One of the legal experts heard their dispute and saw how well Jesus answered them. He came over and asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus replied, the most important one is, Israel, listen, our God is the one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The legal expert said to him, Well said, teacher. You have truthfully said that God is one, and there is no other besides him. And to love God with all of the heart, a full understanding, and all of one's strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more important than all kinds of entirely burned offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered with wisdom, he said to him, You aren't far from God's kingdom. After that, no one dared ask him any more questions. We find ourselves situated in the tension between now and what's yet to come. Not to mention our tendency to think back to what has been. We feel this tension. It is real. We experience it in our larger community and in our families too. Think about the birth of a child. Think about the loss of a matriarch or the retirement of the person who held the whole office together. We gain and lose and try out new identities as we travel through life. For example, I'm no longer a band or a football mom on a day-to-day -day basis, which I miss, but I'm Izzy's Mimi now, and that's a lot of fun. I was recently bemoaning the disappearing act that my long-time mentors seem to all be doing, and my ministry coach said to me, has it occurred to you that maybe it's your season to mentor others. It's tough to make a shift. Our identities and our understandings of ourselves evolve. Sometimes it isn't easy to find our way when we feel like one identity has been lost and another isn't yet comfortable or familiar. On All Saints, we sing the song, the hymn for all the saints, which is big and glorious. We also sing for the bread which you have broken. Verse two goes like this. By this pledge that you do love us by your gift of peace restored, by your call to heaven above us, hallow all our lives, O Lord which feels very relational and approachable to us. We understand God's identity as grand and expansive for all the saints. And also, we know that God joins us right here at home and at our table. As we pray for and honor and grieve the saints who have gone before us today, we also pray for the saints who are here now. 
We celebrate new saints who have joined our community and joined our journey. Those who've gathered to walk alongside us now for the next chapter. Remembering our saints is an opportunity to renew our commitment, to be inspired, to continue the good work God started with and among those saints. We remember and reaffirm our shared identity as the body of Christ, knowing that nothing can separate us from God or one another, not even death. We want to know who we are, who God is, and as much as we can about the relationship we can build together. That desire is nothing new. In Mark's gospel, religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and others, try as they might, have been unable to trap Jesus with their tricky theological and legal questions. In fact, we read that Jesus has silenced them so that nobody even dares ask him any more questions. But in today's text, an expert in Old Testament law, also called a scribe, has yet another question for Jesus. Now, in this case, we don't mean a scribe as in a secretary or someone who takes notes. What's meant here is a man who was a scholar of Old Testament law, someone who studied scripture and interpreted it to others who wrote legal documents and taught law and would have been a member of the Sanhedrin, the highest legal and administrative body in all of Jewish life. This is the guy with a question for Jesus. Which commandment is the most important of all? We can imagine the scribe was intentional about forming this question, that he was aware that Jesus was capable of turning the tables on his questioners. Maybe he thought that he had finally come up with the question that Jesus would trip over, that he wouldn't know how to answer. Which commandment is the most important of all? I mean, that's a pretty good question. Jesus starts his answer by quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6, which he would have known from memory. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. As for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Known as the Shema prayer, it's one of the most famous prayers in the Bible and a daily prayer for ancient Israelites still recited by Jewish people today. On its own, it's already a good answer to the scribe's question, but Jesus expands the Shema to include the words, with all your mind. And additionally, he cites, you shall love your neighbor as yourself from Leviticus chapter 19. And guess what happens? The scribe, instead of tricking Jesus, gets what Jesus is saying. He understands that these commandments are much more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Jesus then acknowledges his understanding. He commends him and encourages him by saying, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Imagine hearing such encouragement from Jesus. You're not far. And if this scribe isn't far, the next question must be, what will draw him closer to the kingdom of God? And imagine that this scribe is us. What if we're not far, even almost there? Maybe we're further along on our road of understanding than we thought. When we were at the Grand Canyon last week, we saw a t-shirt that said, what if everything is okay? And we kept repeating those words on the t-shirt to each other as we traveled and waited for shuttles and buses and airplanes and no end of logistics. What if everything is okay? 
What if our collective wisdom, knowledge, and experience down through the ages, gathered from the saints we've known and the saints who came long before them, has brought us along our journey near to the kingdom of God? We usually feel like we have such a long way to go, which kind of gives us an excuse to kind of act like, well, we're still working on it. So we really can't be expected to get it right. Does this conversation at least get our attention? Does it resonate with our own lives and experience? Love God with everything you've got and love each other like you love yourself. Do we know how to follow these commandments? Have we experienced these commandments? Jesus shows the scribe the truth of God's law that day. Love God, love your neighbor. We have been taught this selfless love through the teachings of Jesus, through the actions of saints we've known and not known. Let us too accept this gift and strive to live as God means for us to live with Jesus who is near to us and with all creation. We hope you're enjoying Pod Church. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel and be notified each time there's a new video. To learn more about everything that's happening in and around Marquette Hope, check out our Facebook page. You can also get our newsletter on the Facebook as well. Church is the weekly online worship of Marquette Hope, a United Methodist faith community located in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Find us at facebook.com slash mqthope, mqthope.com, and on